Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Isn't this special? We're, we're finally here. Um, we'd, we'd like to welcome everybody here in Jesus' name. Um, I just, the verse that keeps coming to my mind this morning is, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I know pastors shared that many times with us. Um, Psalm 122, 1. Um, also, uh, I thought about uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, verses 24 and 25, and I just want to read those for us this morning. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. So we can, over the last couple months, it's been it looks like that day is approaching, isn't it? The, the day that we're looking forward to with the rapture of the church and where, the believers, where we as believers get to go home to be with the Lord Jesus, and we're looking forward to that. But this is, this is great, seeing all you smiling faces out there and uh, not having the computer delay, right, um, in some cases. And we'll get to he hear each other sing live this morning. That, that's, we're looking forward to that. Um, just a couple... Uh, Obviously, we're going to skip greetings with, with everything that we're, we're, uh, we've had to deal with and we're dealing with now. And there's plenty of hand sanitizer to go around um, for everybody. Um, I just wanted to also read, Pastor put this God's protecting shield uh, that Elizabeth Elliot wrote um, some years ago. God shields us from most of the things we fear. But when he chooses not to shield us, he unfailingly allots grace in the measure needed. It is for us to choose to receive or refuse it. Our joy or our misery will depend on that choice. So God, God doesn't always keep everybody from getting a sickness or, or any sickness, but we know that we can depend on him and trust in him. And that's our, that's our blessed hope every day so uh, we're just we're just so thankful to be here this morning and thank you for everybody showing up and what a wonderful thing we got to look forward to um, so some announcements this morning um, as you could probably see the uh, instead of having uh, uh, tithes and offerings the usual way we're just gonna have you drop your offerings as you leave out if you haven't done so already as you leave church this morning. Um, they're sitting back by the table back there. Um, and then uh, Kayla wanted me to mention uh, women's Bible study will be, will be back in person, um, starting ASAP, right? Tuesday and Thursday this week. So uh, a lot of things that uh, we can look forward to um, that, we've been, that we've been hungering for the last several months. So. We're just so glad we can be back. Is there, any, is there anything else that I'm missing that anybody wants me to announce or wants to announce this morning? Okay. Uh, we'll continue. We'll start with, uh, with opening prayer. Bring these things to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that we, could, we can be here. And we, it just seems like, in one aspect, it seems like we've never left. But also we realize that it's been too long. And we're just thankful, Lord, that you are making this possible. We thank you for the Wisconsin Supreme Court, state Supreme Court decision that has put some common sense back into our lives. And we thank you for that this morning, Lord. We thank you for every family that is represented here this morning. And we also want to pray for Pastor, and we thank you for his, for his uh, faithfulness through these last couple months and all the hard work he's put in, as well as uh, Trent and David and everybody who sat apart in the Zoom meeting services that we've, that we've been able to enjoy. And we've still been able to come together, yet in a different way. Lord, we just thank you. And we ask for your blessings upon this service this morning. We pray that you would strengthen Pastor as he brings a message, Lord, and, 
as usual, you always give him, give him the right scripture verses that we need to hear. And Lord, we just ask that you would strengthen him this morning as he, as he feeds us for this week. And we thank, thank you, Lord, for the rain that we're experiencing this morning. We need it. The crops need it. And Lord, you just continue to supply all our needs in Christ Jesus. Whether that's agricultural or food and everything that we need, or and also, most importantly, spiritually, through the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we just bring this service to you this morning, thanking you for the opportunity again. We just pray that, Lord Jesus, your name would be lifted up and glorified, and that's what we're here to do, and we're so happy that we can be here doing it right now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, before Drew reads the scripture lesson, I forgot to mention a couple things. Um, next, next week, uh, the worship service is going to switch to summer hours, obviously 9.30 a.m. And then I, I, it's just critical to just remind you all that uh, any, for anybody that doesn't come to in-person church can catch it on YouTube later today. Um, and thank you all for supporting the radio broadcasts through these times. So um, I guess we'll call on Drew for the scripture lesson this morning. Good morning. I'll be reading from 1 Peter 2, 1 through 5. Therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. And coming to him as to a living stone, which has been rejected by men, but is choice and precious in the sight of God, you also as living stones are being built up as spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the living stone. Jesus is the cornerstone, and we're thankful this morning that we can lift him up. I guess... Uh, if you're trusting in Christ this morning, let's, let's recite the Apostles' Creed. guys can I guess we can be seated for prayer requests so um, obviously we have a lot to pray for don't we um, and a lot to uh, always bring before the Lord um, with everything going on and um, you know I, I I have a special concern for hospitals and people that need you know surgery and and uh, with Lola, obviously, uh, we want to pray for her um, with she, if she's feeling up to it. On Tuesday, she's going to go in for possible radiation, start a radiation. So we want to definitely keep her in prayer. Um, and then the obviously still the Helen Beatty family with losing Helen. And then... Uh, our, our shut-ins that do not get to be do not get to come out like Charles and Burnell and Marilyn, um, and this 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 time is so hard on everybody, um, especially the shut-ins. Though if 
if they can't if they can't leave their the the homes and people can't go to visit them and we just we need to lift them up in prayer um and then andy and Alyssa keep keep them in prayer todd and jane um obviously uh I wanted to mention Myron as well. Myron, it's glad, I'm glad to see you here. Like I said, it's nice to see everybody that we've been hearing on the phone for the last several weeks. Um, uh, so we can actually see everybody, so that's good. Uh, does anybody else have uh, any, any prayer requests this morning or concerns that they want me to, that they want me to pray about? Yeah, go ahead, Mary. I think we have a praise. Also, for a new addition to our congregation, maybe Dan wants oh, to yeah. introduce it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> we get to uphold another one in prayer. So, thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. Um, so, Derek, what did what did you have? Uh, continue prayer for Danny Mom. She continues her radiation. Goes uh, five days a week. She's doing it. So, continue to pray for Kathy and Dewey. Yep. So, Dewey is still having treatments every once a week or several times. Every couple of weeks or whatever. Yeah, we'll withhold. We'll uphold them in prayer. Thank you for. I'm sorry I forgot about your mom, Danny. I, when I was making my list. But at least we can bring her to the throne of grace right now. So. Chelsea and Dustin Rogers had a baby yesterday, um, and everything went pretty good after an emergency C-section, which there was a few things that went wrong with that with Chelsea. So praise, uh, praise for the baby, but prayer for Chelsea and uh, recovery for her. The baby's name is Everett Todd Rogers. Very good. Wonderful. Well, at least hopefully they're doing okay and she's doing okay and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll add that to the list here. Wonderful. Also pray for our government, obviously our state, our state lawmakers with who knows what's coming next with, I don't know if there's going to be a fight with this or we don't know. Um, and also President Trump, obviously keep withholding President Trump and uh, the administration up in prayer. Um, Cause we just, this is kind of uncharted territory, isn't it? I mean, we really don't know. We're not used to this. I'm definitely not. Um, but we need to uphold our elected officials in prayer as well. So, does any, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Um, I guess there's a lot we can pray for with all this, but I'd like to keep in prayer all the people that don't have jobs right now or don't know if they're going to have a job again. Or, I mean, Unemployed. It is. Yeah, it is. There's there's a lot of people that are really hurting. Go ahead, Alan. In the Bible, there's a lot of fear nuts. I lean on that promise. Yeah. Jesus said, how many times? Yeah, go ahead. My left eye is going through what my right eye did back in January, so it's worse. Perfect. We will, not perfect, that's the wrong word, but we'll, we'll pray for that this morning. And June. Uh, I praise the Lord for a successful surgery on my heart and that nothing, uh, I haven't seen the doctor since because it was the day after that this pandemonium broke up. And so, and I thank everybody for praying for me too. It's been a blessing. Yeah, well, we're definitely happy to see your smiling face here this morning, and I'm, we're glad that it, and on the computer the last several weeks, and we're glad that that went well. Um, anybody else? 
We've been gone for two months from this format, so I'm, you know, we should be. We could almost probably spend an hour in prayer time this morning. <laughs> um, it, it just doesn't be this. It doesn't seem to be the same on computer. So uh, it's it's wonderful to be face face to face again. So I guess if that's it, I'll I'll bring these to the Lord in prayer. So Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that we can gather together again in. Lord, that it seems, <clears throat> excuse me, it seems like as of right now, the, the virus has been kept away from our area. And we thank you for that too. Lord, there's so much we need to, we need to come to you with this morning, our casting our burdens upon you. And Lord, we just, we're just so thankful that we can we can do that and that we can still do that in our country. And with that, I just wanted to pray for the persecuted church. Lord, uh, they don't, without fear of death or without the danger of death, they don't get together like this. And if they do, there's consequences. Usually they pay with their lives. So we pray for their strength this morning, especially in North Korea and China. Um, Iran and where Islam is terrorizing your people, Lord, the people that belong to you. Called out ones, Christians. So, Lord, we pray for strength for them this morning. Uh, Lord, we want to pray for Lola and her that she can have radiation on Tuesday if she, if she so chooses. And we pray for her comfort and the peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord, that Ron and Lola would feel that as they go through this time. And Lord, we want to pray for Myron and his challenges as well and, and all our shut-ins with Charles and Burnell and Marilyn. <clears throat> Lord, the, that they can have your word and maybe in, committed to memory. As they go through this time, like Alan said, fear not. And there's there's so many there's so many comforts and so much comfort that comfort that we we're, we're meant to experience through through your word. Your word gives us peace. And so, Lord, we just lift up, especially the shut-ins, and to you in prayer. And Andy and Alyssa, Lord, please. Uh, be with them right now and for Todd and Jane as well with the challenges that they're experiencing. And the Helen Beatty family, Lord, comfort their hearts as they mourn the loss of, of her. And please be with Pastor this morning. Give him strength, Lord, as he brings us a message. And we thank you for his, for his uh, strong faithfulness over these last couple months and for all those who had a part in the Zoom meetings and, and bringing technology to the forefront so that we could, we could fellowship together. At least we had that. And that we could make the best out of, out of these times. We also want to pray for PGM, the Pacific Garden Mission, and all the, all the uh, ministries that we support financially. Um, anybody that's like the, P, like the Pacific Garden Mission that has so many people. They have challenges with the city of Chicago and the state of Illinois. And Lord, we just ask that you would help them with this ministry in these times. And also for President Trump and our state lawmakers. Lord, guide their hearts as they have so many. They're going to have a lot of challenges, and especially for President Trump. Um, he's going to have challenges from here to the election time, and if he gets elected hereafter, Lord, we just pray that if, if him and his family don't know Jesus as their Savior, we pray that he would learn of you, trust in you. I also pray that for Governor Evers and, Lord, so many of our lawmakers that do not trust in you as the true and living God. Uh, like Derek Requested, Lord, we pray for people that have lost their jobs during this time. Lord, that they could, if they don't know you, that they could learn that they can have peace. 
Lord, they can, they can come to you and you will provide. You will provide in some way. There's been so many miracles over the years that we've heard of that people that needed, especially Christians, you always provide for your own. And Lord, we're thankful for that. And we want to pray for Armin's left eye, Lord, um, that, Lord, that you could help him with dealing with the pain or the discomfort, obviously with it. And Lord, we, we would pray that you'd heal it. We pray that you would heal it, Lord. But we're going to leave that in, in your will and in your hands. And we just commit Armin to you this morning. Um, and also for Kathy, Danny's mom, and Dewey, as they struggle with cancer. Lord, in these times, and it's even more of a challenge now because when they go to the hospital, everything is a lot more inconvenient than it used to be. And we would just pray, Lord, for, for their hearts. And Lord, that they would... Commit their ways unto you, Lord Jesus, and please give them comfort while they're, while they're getting administered to with chemotherapy and radiation and all these new technological cancer surgeries or preventative measures and trying to, get the can trying to kill the cancer. And we also pray for Drew's brother Dustin and Chelsea as we thank and praise the Lord that a new child has come, in, come into this world. And we pray for Chelsea this morning and that there's any, if there's anything that needs to be healed, Lord, we just pray for that healing for her and for Dustin as well. And for that family, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for new lives that are coming into the world. And we thank you for Dan and Heather and, and their the successful birth and, and a healthy baby that we can pray for as a congregation. We just praise you, Lord, for life. There's so much concern for so-called life right now. With, or, there's so much concern for, uh, by certain people for life, but yet they ignore the fact that we're still killing babies with abortion. And Lord, we just want to treasure life this morning and praise you and thank you for it. And we just praise you and thank you for June's successful heart surgery, Lord. We're thankful that they can be with us this morning. And Lord, we just want to commit this service to you in Jesus' name. And we just want to give you all the glory this morning. That's our jobs and that's what we're here to do. So Lord, we, we bring this service to you where we commit this service to you in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. All right. Uh, so... Yes, now uh, we'll skip the tithes and offerings, and now you can stand and sing hymn number 364, He Leadeth Me.
The word of life this morning comes to us from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, starting with verse 12. Therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people through his own blood, suffered outside the gate. So let us go out to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we do not have a lasting city, but we are seeking the city which is to come. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that give thanks to his name. And do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. And I just also want to read that fifth verse, from 1 Peter chapter 2 that was read earlier. You also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, take these words and apply them to our hearts. We rejoice today that we can gather together to worship you, to sing your praise. Praise him, praise him. We give you all the thanks and praise for all you've done for us, for all you are doing for us, sustaining us through this time. And thank you again today for the privilege of gathering together to worship you together, to sing your praise together, to hear your word together, to respond to your word together. We give you thanks and praise for the fellowship, the fellowship of believers. And so we offer up spiritual sacrifices of praise all to you, our Lord Jesus Christ. Minister to our hearts here now today. Draw us unto Jesus, whom to know is life and life eternal. Minister to our needs, and may we find our rest in you each day, this day, for we ask it in your precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, our verses for today speak about spiritual sacrifices, about sacrifices. In a biblical sense, what comes to your mind when you hear the word sacrifices? A lot of us think of, and, and rightfully so, the Old Testament sacrifices uh, described and, and uh, given by God to the people of Israel in Exodus and Leviticus. You know, uh, burnt offerings and the Passover lamb, grain offerings, peace offerings, sin offerings, all spoken of as sacrifices. In the Old Testament, when the believers offered sacrifices, they were to bring lambs and other sacrifices to the temple and to be there to be killed and offered to God, seeking his forgiveness, his blessing. And all of those Old Testament sacrifices foreshadowed the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, who would be the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. His death on the cross was foreshadowed by all those hundreds and thousands of sacrifices that were brought to the temple. When Jesus died on the cross, next to the last words he said was what? It is finished. All those Old Testament sacrifices were finished. Through the book of Hebrews, uh, that theme is made very, very clear. Uh, Hebrews 9, 26. But now, once at the consummation of the ages, he, that is Jesus, has been manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Chapter 10, verse 12. 
he having offered one sacrifice for sins for all times sat down at the right hand of God. So much for the Old Testament sacrifices. But that wasn't the end of sacrifice. I was amazed this past week at looking through the scriptures. What does it have to say to us about offering, as we read in Hebrews and 1 Peter chapter 2, spiritual sacrifices acceptable unto God? A spiritual sacrifice is something done or given in the name of Christ for his glory. It's not for ours. It's not for building ourselves up and, and for earning favor with God at all. Out of, but rather out of love and out of gratitude for so great a salvation that God has offered to us and given to all who will receive. How do we express our thanks? How are Christians to express our love and gratitude for so great a salvation. As I mentioned, I was, uh, I was uh, thrilled this past week <laughs> looking up passages, finding passages that talk about the spiritual sacrifices that we give to the Lord because of what he's done for us. Uh, I found seven of them. Uh, if you find some more, let me know. By no means exhausted the supply of all of God's word. But how are we to live as believers in a world that hates God, in a world that hates his son, in a world that hates God's word and denies the truth of God's word, and seeks to live apart from him. How should we then live? Remember, uh, Schaefer uh, created a whole study guide on that theme before he died. How should we now, how should we then live? Well, how should we live? What kind of sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices, are we to offer out of gratitude for so great a salvation. And I found at least seven here today. The first is praise. Praise. We read in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of lips that give thanks to his name. Praise the Lord. As we praise him, it is to be expression, both in song and in spoken word. Uh, I was interested. Great, great verse for today as we gather together in the house of the Lord. Psalm 69, verse 20 and 21, uh, verse 30 and 31. I will praise the name of God with song and magnify him with thanksgiving, and it will please the Lord better than an ox or a young bull with horns and hoofs. There the Lord is comparing the spiritual sacrifices of praise to the Lord. That's better than the Old Testament types, right? They were just types pointing forward to Jesus. It gives the Lord more joy today to hear us singing, praise him, praise him. Think of that chorus we sing uh, 
Sunday school sings sometimes. Praise him, praise him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Every time we praise the Lord with our, our voices, our songs, or in spoken word, it's a spiritual sacrifice to him, giving thanks to the Lord. More even so than the Old Testament sacrifices. Let's praise the Lord today as we gather again in his house. Praise, a sacrifice, a spiritual sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord. The second uh, sacrifice I came across was our bodies, the way we live our lives. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the will of God, that you may experience God's will for your life as we seek to live our lives for him great verses we could spend the whole day on those but I just want you to notice a couple of things in those two verses first of all these verses speak about the difference between the dead sacrifices of the Old Testament and the living sacrifice that we are to offer to the Lord the Old Testament they would come to the temple of the Lord, bring a lamb or a, another animal or grain offering, peace offering, all of these offerings. And the animals would be killed, right? And, their and put on the altar to God. God is not looking for dead sacrifices today. Jesus paid it all. His was the final, complete sacrifice of blood that takes away our sins. But he's looking for a living sacrifice. That's the phrase that's used there, isn't it? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, not as a dead sacrifice, but as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable, it's only reasonable that we are to live our lives for him. The way we speak, the way we act, the priorities in our life, we are to be living as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto him. And how do we know how to live? a life that is pleasing to him? I think it's very, very clear. Remember Psalm 119, verse 11? Thy word have I laid up in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Living our lives in obedience to God's word. We don't need to wonder what is right and what is wrong. What is right and what is wrong is not what you or I say or want to be right or wrong. What is right is what God says is right. What is wrong is what God says is wrong because he is the holy judge. Give our bodies a living sacrifice. A third sacrifice and I thought it was interesting the way the, that God's word speaks about living sacrifices for him Psalm 51 remember David had failed and failed miserably in living a life 
that was pleasing to God. And when he finally came to repentance, when he finally saw his sin as it really was, all of Psalm 51 and all of Psalm 32 as well is an expression of his confessing, laying his sins on Jesus. But in Psalm 51, verse 17, it says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. What's a sacrifice to God? A broken spirit, a contrite heart, a repentant heart. Psalm 34 also talks about that. Uh, Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Worship and commitment to Christ starts with the heart, doesn't it? Not with the outward sacrifices. It starts with the heart. A broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou wilt not despise. That is as a sweet offering to the Lord. When we humble ourselves before God and lay our sins on Jesus, the spotless Lamb of God, he takes them all and bears that accursed load. That's a spiritual sacrifice. And before anything else, that even in the Old Testament, before people would come with their offering, their, their, their you know, lamb or dove or the bullock, whatever it was, the heart, it started with the heart, right? God, I have sinned, I have failed, I have fallen short. And when we acknowledge that, when the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin, we acknowledge our sin. That brings joy to the heart of God. Because Jesus died for your sins. He paid the ultimate sacrifice, right? And when we acknowledge that we need him, that we have sinned against him, a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou wilt not despise. How is your heart this morning? You've seen that commercial all the time they're advertising now. Oh, how is your heart? You get one of these things you put your fingers on. <laughs> and nonsense. I want your heart to be right with God. I lay my sins on Jesus, the spotless Lamb of God. He takes them all and bears them, the accursed load. A fourth spiritual sacrifice is good deeds and sharing material blessings. Again, in our text today, in Hebrews 13, verse 16. Do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. Do you find joy and fulfillment in doing something good, kind to someone who could use a helping hand? That's a spiritual sacrifice. We, we're, we're not to live just for ourselves. That's the spirit of the world. I want this and I want that and I'm going to do what I want. And, no. The spiritual sacrifice is to do that which is right in the sight of God, which includes, as it says here, do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifice God is pleased. Are we living our lives to please God? 
or to please ourselves. Not even just to please other people, but as we see the needs that others around us, family and friends and neighbors, as we seek to meet those needs, God is pleased. Because God cares about each person. A spiritual uh, sacrifice, good deeds and sharing material blessings. Number five, prayer. Is that a spiritual sacrifice, prayer? It is. It's more than that. It's true. But it is certainly that. Psalm 141, verses 1 and 2. O Lord, I call upon you. Hasten to me. Give ear to my voice when I call to you. May my prayer, may my prayer be counted as incense before you the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. In the Old Testament, God had certain times of the day at the temple there was always offered up an evening sacrifice. What's he saying here? God is much more pleased with the prayer, right? Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Prayer is a letting Jesus into your heart and life. I quoted there uh, that one Norwegian theologian. <laughs> Holy Hallisby says, prayer is letting Jesus into your heart and life. I like that. I need that. Are you letting Jesus into your heart and life? Are you pouring out your heart before him? That's a spiritual sacrifice. It isn't something we just do to be doing something. It is an opening of our life to the Lord. Laying our problems, our cares, our heartaches, as well as our joys and blessings, giving thanks to the Lord. Prayer is a spiritual sacrifice. Number six, our tithes and offerings, our spiritual gifts. You say they're material things. Oh, they are material. It is material. But it starts with the heart. Uh, the, the passage I gave you there is Philippians chapter 4, where the Christians in um, Jerusalem were under great persecution and, and had great physical needs, material needs. So Paul was going around to the churches in Europe and collecting an offering that they were going to bring then to the church in Jerusalem. This is what he writes in Philippians 4.18. For I have received everything in full and have an abundance. I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. When we give our tithes and offerings. It's not just the bringing of the physical money. It's a recognition that all that we are and have belongs to the Lord. And we give him that portion. It's a joy. I remember a, a pastor once illustrating that to me class I was in. He had laid out on the table in front of him in the class, ten oranges. What is tithing? One for God, one for me. Two for me. Three for me. Four for me. 
Five for me. Six for me. Seven for me. Eight for me. Nine for me. And ten pencils. One for God, one for me. Two for me. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Out of thankfulness to God, that's a spiritual sacrifice. See, it starts in the heart, doesn't it? You know, the trouble is with our hearts, when our hearts are not converted, totally surrendered to the Lord, somehow the one seems awful big and the nine seems awful small. What a joy to give to the Lord. It's a spiritual sacrifice. And lastly, Sharing the gospel is a spiritual sacrifice. Sharing the gospel. Romans 15, verse 16. To be a minister, he's, Paul is talking about him, himself, to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, ministering as a priest the gospel of God, so that my offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Friend, every time you share personal testimony, that's a spiritual sacrifice. Every time you give a tract, every time you encourage another person in the Lord, sharing the gospel, that's a spiritual sacrifice. And you know, once we have received Christ as Savior, we long to hear the sharing of the gospel. I remember coming back to my home church after being gone for a couple of years and hearing the plain way of salvation shared so clearly. I was, I was saved. I loved the Lord. But you know, every time I hear the gospel, praise God, it blesses my soul, right? Here's two. Reminded again what Jesus has done for this soul of mine. That's a spiritual sacrifice. I close to that little, I've been singing that song to myself through the week as I was working on this. After all he's done for me, after all he's done for me, how can I do less than give him my best and live for him completely after all he's done for me? Can you say that this morning? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you gave your best for us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you for giving your best. Help us to give our best. After all you've done for us, come into our hearts, into our lives. May we lift you up with these spiritual sacrifices of praise, all the rest. For we ask it in your precious name. Amen. How should I respond? Hymn number, I didn't write it down, it's in your book. <laughs> I surrender all. Let's stand and make it our prayer today. Let's close this morning with prayer. Father, help us, the gifts that we've given this morning to be from our hearts, true uh, spiritual sacrifices. And Lord, uh, we just pray that we can think about these verses and the scripture verses shared this morning and this week. Lord, it's so that we can stick close to you as we walk, as we walk in our lives, Lord, this week. And Lord, we just, we thank you for this morning and for being able to come together. And we just want to give you praise. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The Lord bless thee 
and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace.